You're listening to the Caramel Apples Podcast, a podcast that dials up thoughtful, heartwarming nostalgia of all things great and retro in the golden era of pop culture and beyond with your hosts, Kennedy Rizzo and Cooper Lee. Hi, I'm Cooper Lee, and I'll be right back with one to grow on. <laughs> <laughs> for our retro discussion this week? I sure am. This is going to be another good one for sure. That's right. And hello and welcome to all of you, you Orchard Archivers. <laughs> Thanks for making the choice to join us. And this week we have a special offering of Carmelicious 80s nostalgia for you. And that's revisiting the most beloved collection of educational memories buried deep within our memory stores. Mm -hmm. That of the PSA segment, One to Grow On. One to grow on. <laughs> oh my goodness. This was an awesome NBC medium platform of PSAs or public service announcements of different stars from NBC's various primetime series that would take a few moments directly after the ending credits of NBC cartoons. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I remember that well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these are so familiar. These one to grow on PSAs. Yeah. They brilliantly taught young, bright-eyed viewers how to solve different ethical problems. They sure did. You know, they'd really make you think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, fun fact. One to Grow On used to come on Saturday mornings from 1983 through 89 when the network ran cartoons. Mm -hmm. But then, and this is when we remember catching it on TV, it came on weekday afternoons. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and PSAs back in the day were absolutely a regular 70s and 80s staple, readily baked into a lot of the entertainment back then. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> they were actually putting on their thinking caps. <laughs> <laughs> and this here was a standalone PSA. That joined a list of a few others, but the PSAs were so common that a lot of the time they'd include them at the end of popular retro cartoons. Again, appealing to the young masses to use common sense and utilize, say, the code of rule um, when it came to common social scenarios occurring in everyday life. Correct, Cooper. These were brief presentations for just a minute or two of small skits offering sage life advice whenever complicated situations common to youth would arise. As you just referenced, when to grow on segments would readily appear between cartoon show offerings. Coop, as these appeared in our viewing lineup more and more, they truly grew on us. <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> Hence the title. These educational segments were so cool. Yeah, it's a bit cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bit pretty cool. Yeah, there's that too. <laughs> <laughs> so, Wonder Grow On featured many celebrities of that era star in these. Most being closely connected to other popular well-known shows in the NBC lineup. And closer in age, too, like we Gen Xers. Mm -hmm. But more on that here in a moment. Um, so now we're about to shift our retro time travel in high gear in regards to some heavy-duty nostalgia. Oh, good. Yeah. So, Kennedy, mm -hmm. <laughs> what's up with one of the standout components um, surrounding the Want to Grow On segments you particularly enjoyed? I don't know. I just liked how it was... The way it was patterned back then in the 80s, it had a very 80s feel to it. Good answer, good answer. Yeah, very nostalgic. <laughs> <laughs> I cheated. <laughs> and we already briefly mentioned the celebs connected to it. Mm -hmm. So what else is a standout memory for you? Okay, so back to that retro feel. I like how the uh, animated intro and accompanying music showcased um, 
at the beginning of One to Grow On segments. That was very nostalgic for me. Yeah. I mean, you can hear it now. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> One to Grow On began with an animated sequence that led into and was us, the young viewers, follow into and draw attention to the animated television set on which our celeb actors appear. Hi, I'm Kennedy Rizzo, and I'll be right back with One to Grow On. <laughs> <laughs> Ten after the actor introduced him or herself, which I think in 1986 uh, was followed by a 30 second commercial, a live action scenario or skit would appear where a fellow young one faced a moral ethical dilemma. Make no mistake, these segments were by no means Emmy worthy offerings, <laughs> but they did their jobs and got the point or points across and became a huge part of our fond memories. Sure did. <laughs> you know, the segments would then cut back to the actor who then explained to the viewers how to solve said problem, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. And um, the featured young one um, then either had to own up to the consequences of the action discussed or make an effort to rectify the issue. And Kennedy wanted to grow on really concentrated on uh, encouraging critical thinking, which is definitely needed <laughs> and common sense in order to tackle an array of subjects quite common to use like smoking lying inclusion with peer groups bullying dealing with divorce oh yeah totally like you said man critical thinking common sense and <laughs> dial up <laughs> new life skills oh my goodness that sorely lacks now yeah. with adults <laughs> They even honed in on playing with matches and playing practical jokes on unsuspecting parties. Just to make quick mention of a couple more there on your list, Coop. The chosen actor would end the segment by stating, and that's one to grow on. <laughs> <laughs> and one to grow on was a huge warm facet we youth got to enjoy and now fondly remember from the 80s. As we briefly mentioned before, one to grow on debuted in 1983 and lasted six whole seasons with some of NBC's greatest greats up until 1989. <laughs> the more you know, the further you will go. Cool, right? Oh, yeah. And that's one to grow on. <laughs> <laughs> so check this out. Fun fact. Did you know that the one to grow on PSAs were replaced by the more you know PSAs in September of 1989? Oh, that's very interesting. Hmm, I really don't recall the more you know PSAs standing out as much in the way of cherished memories and by way of warm nostalgia like the one to grow on PSAs. Yeah. Um, youth going forward, respect for others, as well as common sense, has pretty much gone in the way of the dodo. <laughs> as we just stated, because you can literally look around and any given day... There's mess everywhere <laughs> because people don't have this common sense and such. <laughs> we are a witness to this ugly fact daily. <laughs> Short supply. Fumes. <laughs> They're all fumes. <laughs> Check social media. You'll see. <laughs> That's a scary place. <laughs> but I know what you're saying, right? It's pretty scary and unsettling, I might add. And hey, maybe if they had kept doing these one to grow on segments, <laughs> instead of being, you know, maybe social media platforms wouldn't be the instrument of destruction it is today. Right. And right. that's just one area today that can use a bit of an overhaul from time to time. Right. You know. Um, <laughs> Goodness. It was funny because, you know, when the pandemic really got going and there'd be articles, you know, that you'd read in the news feed. And you know how they always have comment sections. Yes, yes. Remember how those were disabled for a while? <laughs> yeah, people were hot. <laughs> yes, because they wanted to express themselves. So, you know, yeah. they got censored a little bit. They're back now. They're back now. And people are worse than ever. <laughs> Need that overhaul. <laughs> You know, but some of the examples of such can absolutely be brutal. Oh, good work, Coop. <laughs> <laughs> nice observation. <laughs> These PSA offerings were such a refreshing medium back then, expertly woven into the throwback entertainment of the time for the younger ones. We sorely needed tailored life lessons given to us outside of our standard secular education, you know, to help us navigate on a constant basis. You are so right. Of course I am. 
Oh, humility, humility. <laughs> Can we dial that up with the common sense? <laughs> and one of the main reasons that the one to grow on PSAs etched its way into both our memories and hearts were due to who was chosen to present these segments. Mm -hmm. Were the celebrities uh, we couldn't wait to see. What a brilliant PR move on the part of creative execs. Indeed, Coop. Goodness, where do we even start? I know, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we've compiled a few of the one to grow on quotes slash life common sense lessons we received on the regular from some of our favorite stars. So who do you like and remember, Coop? Oh, that is a good question. Thinking cap, please. <laughs> I would have to say Mrs. Garrett. Oh, nice. Yes, she was really cool in doing that. And um, the little sister from Family Ties. Oh, of course, you'll know this because of uh, your celebrity crush. Oh, at the yes. Time. Okay. Yes. Oh, she just put me on blast, yes. kids. Tina Yothers. Yes, yeah, she did really good in that. <laughs> There's so many. <laughs> when? Well, Kennedy. Same question back to you. Oh, um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Um, Knight Rider. Okay. Um, Michael J. Fox. <laughs> um, Rose Nyland. She did one. So, like, there was a lot of heavy hitters from the NBC lineup. Yeah, yeah. I think everybody, I think their go-to is, like, the Facts of Life girls. But, oh, yeah. yeah. Especially Tootie. Tootie, she, <laughs> she, she got people going back then. They were like, oh, yeah, Tootie's hot or whatever. Like, Tootie's cool. Like, Tootie? Yeah, what? Is it the pigtails? And her skates. <laughs> yeah, Tootie was cool, but not, that's not why they thought she was cool. They were like, yeah, she's our jam. <laughs> Way to go, Ken Fields. <laughs> so like I said, the rest of our episode of Want to Grow On, we'll be discussing some of these ethical, moral life situations and also on the celebs that presented. Are you ready, Cooper? I sure am. <laughs> okay. So a moment ago, we mentioned uh, some of the key topics covered that were commonly faced and experienced by youth back in the 80s. Mm -hmm. So many of these were relatable. So remember the one to grow on segment about dealing with parental divorce? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of the PSA hosted by actor Michael Gross, um, the dad from Family Ties. I gotcha. Yet again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was out to encourage young ones potentially suffering the ugly, hurtful effects of such by saying, and I quote, Hey, divorce is a sad thing. No one ever plans on it happening, but it does. And a lot of families. So don't blame yourselves or push away your friends. You're not alone. A lot of people have divorced parents. So don't stop living. Life goes on. So, you know, back then, it seems like um, divorce was very much not the norm. You're right. Um, different then. It was. I mean, it happened, but not, not like, I mean, it's totally different now. Right. You know, and I think... It was so catastrophic. Not not saying it's not now. Not saying that at all. But because, you know, that probably didn't make children feel different. Um, yeah. Among their peers when there's two parent families and whatever. And they were the right. one out of the ten that weren't anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. Versus now, you know, people, mm -hmm. it's it's common everyday thing. Yeah. Still not, not that it's less hurtful for kids, but it's a, you're almost in the minority now to come from a two-parent family. It's true. It's like everything did a 180. And, you know, how appropriate to have the dad of family ties. Yeah. You know, I mean, they portrayed a family that was very together. I mean, they had, they were a family, you know, whatever. Right. But he was the dad giving this kind of advice for kids. So maybe somebody looked up to him and was like, oh, he's a cool dad. He's a cool dad on TV. Right. You know, they might be more readily available to listen. Or to take his words to heart versus just, you know, any old rando or whatever. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, Cooper. You know, we often enjoy a few Wonder Girl On segments featuring some of the cast members of The Facts of Life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I love The Facts of Life. I know you do. How nostalgic. It is. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a couple of endearing life lesson quotes to share from them. Like mine, I'm going to share is from Lisa Welchel. So her words of wisdom go something like this, and I quote, Oh, no is right. J 
Just because your parents aren't home doesn't mean there's a new set of rules or an absence of them to go by. What it means is responsibility when you're alone. You're the head of the house. So don't let your parents down. Remember, they're counting on you to be in control of what happens. And that means not letting the house collapse around your ears. <laughs> End quote. Okay, thank you, Blair. <laughs> that was pretty sound advice for young ones, I guess. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh -huh. You know, and it was coming from Blair, as you mentioned. Yes. So there's that. <laughs> 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 so also along the lines of young ones finding themselves at home alone and timely wisdom offered once again regarding that mm -hmm. comes from the most beloved member of the Golden Girls. Oh, here we go. Ah, yes. Betty White. <laughs> 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 yes. Her words of wisdom on the matter, Betty White, a.k.a. Rose Nyland, says, and I quote, Don't panic if you know you're going to be alone in the house. Make sure you have the phone number of a neighbor or a relative handy to call in case of an emergency. Ask your parents where they'll be and keep numbers for the police and fire department by the phone. Knowing who to reach in a hurry will take away the need to worry. End quote. <laughs> <laughs> Why, thank you, Rose. <laughs> I'd say it would be fairly easy to heed helpful advice coming from the grandmother type. Oh, yes. <laughs> from a golden girl, no less. <laughs> I know. I just love Rose. <laughs> <laughs> now, some of our chosen celebs that hosted One to Grow On actually did so on more than one occasion. We just shared what a well-respected, well-liked father figure from Family Ties had to share, that of Michael Gross. But we were also privileged to hear words of wisdom from his TV kids as well. I think I vaguely remember one to grow on segments with the baby sister. You're the one you just mentioned, your favorite actress, um, <laughs> uh, Tina Yothers. But we can easily recall the older siblings taking on this honor more than once or even two or three times. <laughs> and that was from Michael J. Fox and Justine Bateman. As you said, they recognize them as a complete family unit. And yeah, yeah, like they really probably bought into the whole scenario of what they presented on TV. That's right. Family. Yes. It's so weird. Like Justine Bateman. Mm -hmm. I was told I reminded someone of her. Or, yeah. <laughs> I remember yeah. that. I was like, okay, got it. I can see it. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. I'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, shush. Yeah, what? <laughs> uh, so Mallory mm -hmm. did one on how not to take issue with another if their opinion or outlook on something is in, indeed different from yours. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and her other one to grow on PSA was about not having an attitude and working with others you're not quite acquainted with. People need that today. I was going to say, yeah, like, right. that's so, so profound. Yes, yes. She's giving advice to people who got groceries at the time and maybe flip some fries and burgers, right? But people need this thing. Working in, I don't know, factories. They need it. Working in office buildings. They need these. Oh, desperately. Oh, goodness. <laughs> And then the nice um, encouragement was to have an open mind and eventual heart in getting to know someone over time. Give them a chance and you just might make a good friend or two. <laughs> I'm telling you, Coop, because I mean, like, I literally just saw on social media where people were screaming high decibels at each other coming out of a, you know, a, like a Walmart or something, you know, a, a, a box store. Wow. I am under the impression that they were stealing, but then yelling because the, the clerks were calling them out, following them out of the store. They were just taking the stolen goods, throwing them in their car, shouting. I mean, like, what? just wave. You know, everybody knows. <laughs> I mean, they weren't being covert about it and just having an attitude and everything. But, like, they were clearly stealing groceries and yelling at the, like, like you have no right to be, you know, Wow. Filming me or telling me not to steal. Or like, people have lost their flipping minds. Oh, yeah. You could say that again. 
Oh, so again, <laughs> Wonder Girl, they need to bring them back. <laughs> it's in a hurry. They have very sound and practical common sense in these segments offered. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to have these, you know, they're very valuable. Because, I mean, we grew up in this era, and, I mean, we were taught common sense anyway, but, you know, like, kids had better manners and stuff back then, and this was just kind of the cherry on top. I wonder if the pandemic has just really brought the ugly out of people. I, I don't know. second that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The pandemic of bad manners now. <laughs> it's embarrassing. They act like they're in a zoo. <laughs> Throwing stuff in the, they'll be in the store, and they just throw stuff. Just throw stuff in anger, you know, spitting, screaming like they're nuts. I mean, I'm not kidding. It's embarrassing. But I hope you ain't somebody's bomb or something, you know what I mean? Right. Oh, my God. Yes, and now everything can be captured. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button now. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. Now. Back to the show. So, you know, it's just such a sad turn of events going down out there. I don't know, more than we care to admit. Yeah. But we can't deny it. Like, it's, they're putting themselves on blast. They're on social media. Somebody's taping them or filming them, you know? So, it's yeah. like, they're not filming themselves. Somebody else is doing it. And they just, they're all over the place. Yes. People have lost their minds. <laughs> yes. And, and those PSAs were sorely needed back then. And it's like, obviously, yeah. maybe they didn't work. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> these are adults and this is still happening so Man. we should have just turned tuned in <laughs> society has gone rogue yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the fuel and valuable wisdom of an era of the retro psas has sadly run dry and we said it a minute ago we are on fumes <laughs> <laughs> So just check out the current news feed on that at any level. Oh, yeah. And it's quite embarrassing, to yeah. be completely honest. And plentiful. Uh, yes. Yes. It's all over. <laughs> <laughs> and it really feels like we've gone backwards in so many ways instead of forwards. Mm -hmm. Hence why it is so refreshing to frankly speak on such fond, nostalgic topics like want to grow on PSAs. Well said, Koopa Dill. I totally agree. <laughs> so as we referenced a moment ago... Alex P. Keaton, all of Michael J. Fox, too, had the good pleasure of hosting a couple of One to Grow On segments. Being that he was one of my teenage crushes and all. <laughs> you are a hot mess, Kennedy. Confessional time. Have to. You put me on blast, you man. I know. I love it. <laughs> That's okay. I know where you live. Filing. <laughs> Filing. <laughs> But his face showed up on screen as we young hormonal apples back then took notice. <laughs> You're like, that's singular. Yes. <laughs> okay, fine. Hormonal apple. <laughs> <laughs> the two PSAs I'm thinking of that he did was the dangers of playing with matches. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's a good one for young ones to hear for sure. Totally. Certainly is. His match's advice is no match with one to grow on. He states, and I quote, What's so hot about playing with matches? Every year, thousands of people are hurt or left homeless by the careless use of fire. Fire is a tool. You cook with it. It keeps us warm. It gives us light. But it can be very dangerous if it is used improperly or if it's played with like some kind of toy. If you don't treat fire with the respect it deserves, it can cause a lot of trouble. It could even cost somebody's life. Perhaps your own. End quote. Ah, uh, you know what? I can visualize him saying those words of wisdom all solemnly now. Yeah, yeah. And it would work. You know, you would think about the messages that they were conveying mm -hmm. and truly get the sense and gravity of what our favorite celebrities expressed. Yes, Cooper. 
And it really worked for us kids back then because if Michael J. Fox, Mr. T, or any of your other favorite celebs was sharing great coming-of-age wisdom, we enjoyed it and were at rapt attention. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest, it was a whole lot easier learning and heeding common sense coming from our favorite celebs versus our stick-in-the-mud parents. (laughs) (laughs) So the second one was interesting and of a more serious nature involving what we understand And that was where the need to be alert to the very real dangers of sexual molesters and predators. Yeah, buddy. They were big on the whole stranger danger concept back in the 70s and 80s. Yep. 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 And sadly, so many of these types who would prey on children weren't just the ones who jumped out of the bushes or from a dark alley. Right. But the harassment and injustice came from people whom they knew and were close to and trusted. Which gives pause and uh, an ugly sinking feeling when you think of such shocking occurrences. I know. Truly awful. And that is one thing back in the day. You know, we did hear stories of that. Yeah. It's not as bad as it is now, maybe because we have the internet where there was more exposure. But, like, that that kind of was a thing back then. Like, kids had to be careful. Yeah. We're Gen Xers. Like, a lot of us had to raise ourselves, so they had more freedom in a way than well, kids, I don't know now. <laughs> yeah. They're adults at nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, like, out of necessity, Gen Xers were, because the parents were working and stuff, so. So, Michael J. Fox shares about this as follows, and I quote, It sounds like Uncle George has a problem keeping his hands to himself. And that's a problem that can become very serious. Your body belongs to you. Remember that. No one should touch you in ways that make you feel uncomfortable. And if someone's touching you in ways that seem strange, whether it's a teacher or a friend or your favorite uncle, tell your parents or another adult you trust. Maybe there's nothing wrong, but if there is, someone ought to know about it right away. Yeah, see a message like that is strong, but sound helpful advice. Yeah, and again, that was kind of a, not a thing, but it was, you'd hear of cases back then. So like, it was nice that society, adults and society collectively felt more in tune to protect children, to to put a message out like this. I mean, these people produced this, you know, they wanted to let them know they weren't alone or that that. They were aware. They understood. Mm -hmm. So I think that's cool. I like how things were tailored to kids. You know, it was baked into the cartoons and the PSAs and stuff back then. Like, you know, we were kind of alone, but we weren't. (laughs) (laughs) So I think that's nice that, you know, that this of a more serious nature that they didn't take it lightly. You know, that they actually dedicated some segments to that. Because truth be told, as we've already mentioned, Kids are going to be more in, they have people, these adults that know them have access to them. Mm -hmm. The stranger in the bushes probably doesn't happen that often. Mm -hmm. So it would be the people that would be in their circle that, yeah, yeah. Sad, sad, sad. Yeah. But, you know, and that's, like you said, they produced this and they were like Uncle George. They had, they They used. Put that in there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not just the guy walking down the street or the lady. I mean, agree. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. That's, that's terrible. Yeah. That's terrible. So someone else we remember giving stage life lessons from the NBC lineup was the ever youthful Ricky Schroeder from Silver Spoons. (laughs) He was encouraging his fellow generational brethren and sister. (laughs) Again, that'd be us. (laughs) Thanks, Ricky. (laughs) Yes, thank you, Ricky. (laughs) He would give sound encouragement not to lie. And I quote, (laughs) Who are you kidding? Lies might get you off the hook once in a while, but when you're caught lying, it's awful. And if you lie all the time, people won't pay attention to what you say anymore. So why not tell the truth and face the music? It's hardly ever a bad thing as you think it's going to be. End quote. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) That's a great one shared, Kennard. (laughs) Yeah. Kids do lie. So, I mean, (laughs) that's just kind of like they breathe. (laughs) They lie. (laughs) That hasn't changed. (laughs) Tell us all this time. A fish to water. Yes. Yes. (laughs) And another 80s favorite who had no doubt been able to get his message across was WWE's and A-Team's key alumni, 
Mr. T. <laughs> he pitied a fool who didn't listen. <laughs> 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 One of these days I'll nail that. <laughs> Thank you, <Brian. laughs> So one of his memorable ones to grow on segments was highly appropriate as well as relatable for one who wanted to get into working out and lifting weights and such. Mm, okay. Yes. He was encouraging anyone who had big goals and dreams to do so, to take it easy and to, to try to do so smart as part of his, quote, um, encouragement and getting youth interested in their wellness and such that although notable that it won't happen overnight and the need for hard effort commitment and patience were definitely necessary oh yeah mm -hmm. and he goes and i quote well see there are some things even t ain't ready for <laughs> nothing comes easy so if you want to get bigger start smarter that's cool. Principled advice, not only for working out, diet, and proper nutrition, but that really can be applied in all areas of life. Yeah. <laughs> Sage advice. Yep. You know, this is true. And his second one was basically calling out Colonel Mustard <laughs> and friend groups. <laughs> <laughs> Colonel Mustard, we're playing glue. <laughs> He's always a Colonel Mustard. <laughs> he is. The Mohawk gives it away. <laughs> so, who, according to Mr. T, were acting like chumps by insisting on having their own way in most affairs <laughs> and not being open to sharing things or other ideas. That right there is nice advice in opening up our minds and sharing ideas with others helps us appreciate teamwork and a sense of community, friendship, and belonging. We have great memories of our girl squad and reference it often here on our podcast because of how special and nostalgic it was. Yeah. Remember Jason Bateman, younger brother of Justine Bateman, a seriously 80s face at the time? I sure do. <laughs> <laughs> I believe he showed up on Silver Spoons as Ricky's best friend a time or two. Yes, he did. Okay. Um... He did a one to grow on PSA uh, about being aware of your surroundings while playing loud music in public. Mm. Now, this was a huge message for the time because as pop culture would have it, break dancing and carrying boom boxes around <laughs> blasted the latest hip hop cut was all the rage back then. And we use were all too eager to emulate that. Mm -hmm. So his sage advice was sound and very timely to help you to Still go ahead and have your fun, but to take a look around and be aware of what your choices are or how you play your music will ultimately affect others. And I add that he wasn't bad to look at either. Thank you, Jason. Oh, yeah. That was your eye candy one of them, wasn't it? Yes, he was. <laughs> blast. That's why it's blast. weird to hear you look like a sister. That's weird. Don't want to hear that. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, just, <laughs> that just got weird real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah like what? <laughs> the 80s were simply great and it's shows like one to grow on and they're friendly fun stars we grew up with and remembered on our favorite primetime shows that made these warm offerings that much more nostalgic mm -hmm. so we've got a couple more memorable one to grow on psas to talk about before we end our awesome orchard retro trek this week and next one is soleil moon fry A.K.A. Punky Brewster. Yes, Punky <laughs> Brewster. <laughs> O.P.U. She was fairly young back in the 80s, uh -huh. more like grade or middle school age. So again, in regards to the reach, you know, the target of certain demographics within the youth scope, one to grow on PSAs were thankfully out to help those in their tender years, too which was sorely needed. Mm -hmm. She shared cool life lessons for her fan peers about being open and cooperative for your parents and guardians when sick and needing to see a doctor. Oh boy. <laughs> yes, not fun for the children. No. <laughs> and the second PSA of hers that comes to mind is uh, if when a child gets lost in public, like at a mall or grocery store, you know, kids were encouraged to find someone that uh, worked there that they could trust and ask for help. I had to do that so many times. 
She did. Coop will always get lost. Yes. Ridiculousness. <laughs> <laughs> so um, she ended it with, and I quote, so long as there's people around, you won't stay lost. End quote. <laughs> Fun fact, Solid Moon Fry was eight years old when the first season of Punky Brewster debuted. She is now, like so many of us Gen Xers, beautiful and aging gracefully at 46 years old. Way to go, Punky! Way to go. <laughs> OPU again. Now to top off our wonderfully nostalgic retro track of Wonder Grow on this week, we happily started out our discussion with one of the key cast members of the oh-so-memorable NBC show, The Facts of Life, with Lisa Welcho, a.k.a. Blair. But we cannot forget about a couple of others from that show who gave great effort uh, in this regard, too. And that was Nancy McKeon, um, a.k.a. Joe Polnicek. <laughs> and I do believe a fan favorite times 10 we mentioned earlier was Ken Fields, <laughs> a.k.a. Tootie Ramsey and her skate. He skates and all, yes. <laughs> <laughs> We cannot overstate the fact that Tootie was well liked. <laughs> she was. I think she had like 10 of these. <laughs> Whatever works. <laughs> but back to Joe, real quick. Um, there was a couple one to grow on segments that she had the privilege of presenting. And one was more on the lines of the Stranger Danger theme. Oh, okay. Yeah. Where if you're, excuse me, where you're home alone and a stranger knocks at the door, to not let them in. Good advice. Yes. And if they were delivering something, tell them to leave it at the door. If they insist on trying to come in. Creepy. Yeah. Then Joe says to tell them to come back later. That's right. If Joe speaks, we do what Joe says. Stat. <laughs> <laughs> she was hardcore. She was rough and tumble. <laughs> <laughs> so the other, um, the second PSA that Joe did was no doubt much needed encouragement for the different among us or odd duck, so to speak. Joe rolled out timely commentary to who may have struggling hard with this coming. Yeah, because not gonna lie, kids could and still be cruel to others often. And an ugly little secret is that some of the heartless bullies never grow out of it. They turn into insecure and mean adults. <laughs> and you can pretty much find these anywhere. Uh, we kind of touched on this a moment ago. But, you know, you'll find them at work, within families, the general public, and in a notoriously crazy realm going on right now, social media. <laughs> so, again, remember, be kind. Because Joe Polnicek and Mr. T said so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, last but certainly not least, we're going to quickly peer into the words of wisdom from Miss Kim Fields, a.k.a. Tootie Ramsey, <laughs> and what she had to share as she was a huge fan favorite on the facts of life. Um, she did a want to grow on PSA on using common sense as well as a bit of caution if one um, chose to play practical jokes on someone else. <laughs> Which is both funny and appropriate that they chose her for this message, seeing how she was the one of the key ones on the show who was a natural practical joker. <laughs> Good ones, executives. Yeah, yeah. So maybe they were going for the irony of it all? <laughs> they had to have been. Because <laughs> uh. she truly was a practical joker. <laughs> on skates. Yes. But, you know, we always enjoy Tootie. Yeah. So she said, and I quote, that's a tough one. There's nothing wrong with playing a practical joke once in a while. <laughs> Spoiler alert! <laughs> <laughs> now, I played a few in my day, but if you see that somebody's idea of a joke is likely to hurt somebody else, uh, then you should do something about it. That's not being a tattletale. That's just plain old-fashioned common sense. End quote. <laughs> <laughs> so her second quote I'd like to share, which involves smoking... Oh, yeah. That's a big one from back when we were coming up. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. So Tootie said, and I quote, Yeah, you'll get used to it all right, and then how are you going to quit? Believe me, smoking is a habit, a bad one. I don't need experience to know that, and neither do you. 
People might tell you that having cigarettes will make you look older, but let me tell you, I've known too many adults who smoke and most of them are struggling to quit. Smoking is neither healthy nor cool. So do yourself and your friends a favor, act smart and don't start, end quote. Thank you, Tootie. <laughs> <laughs> and to all of our NBC retro TV stars of that time, and having the one to grow on PSA platform to share their wonderful words of wisdom for the up and coming youth back then. One to grow on was a revolutionary concept for its time. Not only did we get to enjoy one to grow on PSAs in this form, PSAs were really cleverly baked into so much of the programming specific to the youth demographic of the 70s and 80s. Yeah, and we were quite fortunate to catch the one to grow on um, segments while we were coming up. I agree. And it's always such a treat to go back to, to an era when things are simpler and better. And we're definitely not alone in feeling that way either. Not even. And that's a good thing. One to Grow On was brilliant. And I'm glad we got to take a few minutes this week and revisit the warm nostalgia of this most cherished retro gem. So special indeed. I agree, Kennard. <laughs> so to our Orchard Archivers, which standout One to Grow On segment resonated with you and that you remember or impacted you most? Who is your favorite host or the message they shared that really stood out to you? Hit us back. We're eager to hear your thoughts and memories on such. As the saying goes, all good things must come to an end. And again, in the late 80s. Yeah, uh, in 1989 to be exact. <laughs> yes, that's true. The one to grow on PSA did just that, but not without capturing the attention of the up and coming youth back then. It's these special type programs that we can memorialize in a real way. The things we finally remember, cherish, and talk about. The more you know, the further you'll go. Howard, that really hurts. Can we play again? Sure. And that's one to grow on. And that's one to grow on. <laughs> and that's it for this week's episode. To make sure that you never miss out on another second of our Carmelicious podcast, meet up with us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcast fix. Bye for now, and thanks so much for listening.